Hello YouTube land! Uh, welcome to Force in Unison Live! Episode 25! We're back, baby! Tonight we're gonna talk about Spider-Man PS4 release date. We're gonna talk about the PlayStation 5? What? We're gonna talk about Spyro coming everywhere, everywhere except the Switch. Mm -mm -mm. But the best part of it all, tonight we're gonna have some fun! And of course, joining me, like always, Kali Hones! How you doing, Kali Hones, in this beautiful night? Well, hey, how you doing, Dantes? How you doing, everybody? And yes, like Dantes said, we got a pretty good topics, you know, to discuss, uh, you know, today. Uh, like, you know, we've talked about a few of the Force Unison uh, in the, the previous one. We've had struggled a little when it comes to certain topics and things like that. But this is a very good one. This, uh, yeah, this is something that we want to cover. And, uh, you know, very interesting. I want to know what Dantes has to say in, in a couple of these topics right here. So, Dantes, go ahead and take it away. Ew, that looks bad. There you go. That's better. <laughs> no. Oh my God. Anyway, production values to the floor tonight. <laughs> anyway, I got a knife. Why do I have a knife, Caliones? Because we're going to be unboxing this baby right here. But that will be later on the show. So stick around so we can watch it. But anyway. With that said, let's do our rigmarole because we got a lot of topics to cover tonight. Anyway, I want to welcome everybody to get no, sorry. I want to welcome everybody to the Force in Unison Live episode 25 right here at the Force in Unison Gaming Channel. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make this too crazy MS happy. Also, remember, we do have a Nintendo podcast called the Get In and Get Out Nintendo Podcast every Saturday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, remember, we do have a Facebook page called at Force in Unison Gaming. And finally, and Nantes says finally, go to chicharosnews.com and switchcore.net and keep some clicks and love to my boy Kalianis. With all that said, let's start the show! I did my best. Uh, what was the Snapple guy impression? Yeah, that was the Snapple guy. I think I did. I did a pretty good job, right, Kalianis? No. Yeah, I mean, no, no hidden meanings or anything like that. Yeah, just, just, yeah, straight, straight, straight. straight to the point. Anyway, with that said, boom, 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 boom. Kalianis, go with the first piece of news, which is with our favorite web slinger. Okay. Well, um, this is. Uh, I'll say it's probably the biggest news. Uh, you know, for the week. Uh, basically, uh, Sony has finally announced their release date for Spider-Man on the PS4. It's going to be coming out on September 7. It's going to have a regular version. It's also going to have a collector's and a digital deluxe edition as well. Uh, the game, uh, I mean, looks great. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see how the, the combos and everything else is going to work. Uh, but I hope, and this is what uh, you know, like some people have been saying, is that you know they compared a little to the uh, the Batman Arkham games, and hopefully this is going to be able to be on par with the other quality of those games, uh, be it the story or the gameplay. Uh, but but I'll tell you this, this game has some big shoes to fill because those Spider-Man games. Uh, that came out on the PS2. Those were some pretty good games, especially yeah you know, the uh, you know the first Spider-Man, the second one. You know, based on the first two movies, those were really good games on the PS2. Uh, so I hope this can do better somehow. But Dantes, um, I mean, what are you surprised that the game is going to be coming out for me? You of know, what I believe is sooner than I thought it would. I thought it was going to be either yeah you know, either the uh, the winner, and I wouldn't would not have been surprised if it would have been pushed back to like next year or something like it, but. September 7, it is a lot earlier than I thought it would be. Yes. So, let me say this, though. I, I knew that this game was coming this year. I think that it looked pretty well. Uh, based on the gameplay, I've been watching a lot of the coverage from Game Informer. So, shout out to Game Informer for the good coverage they've been doing with Spider-Man. The game looks awesome, Caliones. I think it is kind of putting the doubts of a lot of people's minds to rest. Of course, we don't want to get hype until we play it. But it looks like a really good game. And Insomniac is a good developer. They don't. They didn't pick, like, uh, whatever ham and egger down in the corner to do this game. Sony the new that if their own internal studio couldn't do, do it, they can trust their typical second-party studio, which is Insomnia, which has done great games like Ratchet & Clank, which came out uh, just a couple of years ago. And again, I want to give props for Sunset Overdrive, which is an underrated game on the Xbox, one of the few games that I have on Xbox that are really good. Uh, but I do want to say that Spider-Man looks really promising. 
Uh, I am hyped. Caliones, the battle system looks fluid. Uh, there's a lot of environmental takedowns based on the gameplay that I saw from Game Informer. And, of course, the open world, how you can tra travel around the open world is fast, is fluid. Uh, it looks like they nailed, nailed, I think, the, uh, uh, how you call it, the web slinging across New York City. And New York City itself looks beautiful, too. So, you know, I'm saying, like, wow. Like, last year, you know, and I, I know I'm a Sony guy, but I gave a lot of props for Nintendo last year. They destroyed last year. Nintendo, I thought, was had one of the best years. But you have to give Calionis, even if you're not a, a Sony fan, you have to give credit where credit's due. This year now promises for Sony to be their year, right? Now they already got a 92 with Shadow of the Colossus. God of War is getting a lot of great previews. But again, I don't want to go put the horses ahead of the carriage. Well, the carriage ahead of the horses, sorry. Because in reality, we haven't played God of War. We don't know if it's going to deliver. Uh, we know that uh, the Shadow of the Colossus did deliver. We know that uh, uh, Major League, the show, delivered. It's, uh, it's sitting on another 80 song, 84 across uh, Metacritic. But, you know, Ma Major League, the show, it is a yearly game. So a lot of people don't discount it. But it is a Sony exclusive. And it is the premier baseball game on on the on the industry now you have got a war coming up uh detroit becomes humans is gonna release soon too uh and then spider-man also and I, I haven't even put dreams in there which i don't care about dreams but my fate on this year is basically hanging around the 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 shoulders of spider-man and god of war they look both great so caliones you know you know, you know, you know that I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. Always been a huge Spider-Man fan. He's always been my favorite Marvel uh, superhero. And I, I feel that happy in a sense and hopefully will deliver that he will be treated the same way as Rocksteady has done with Batman. I love, I'm going to say repeat this, I love the Batman Arkham games. They're top-notch, best superhero games of all time, in my opinion. And, and that's easy to say. There hasn't been that many great, but... Spider-Man could compete in that crowd. And I would be just more than happy that this game is just on par with the same quality as Rocksteady games with the Batman game. So anyway, anything to add, Kalers? I know I went on a long run, but you know I'm excited about this game. Well, uh, I mean, I guess uh, one of the things I would say is that uh, I mean, you're uh, such a big fan of Spider-Man that you were actually collecting the uh, the Ultimate Spider-Man games, yeah. uh, I mean, comic books, yeah. when they came yeah. out. And I believe the, you know, the first issue on those is worth close to like 150 dollars or more uh you know for the comic book so i mean make sure that they're still safe and yeah. i don't know where they are uh, i need to find it but anyway we'll, we'll look at it <laughs> yeah but um but uh the other thing i would say is uh yes uh you know so far this year the the playstation has had some great games coming out like you said you know nino kuni 2 is one of them mlb the show is another one uh um, you, know, you did say shadow of the colossus as well uh, the only thing that you know Sony hasn't had really, even though those have been great games and the reception has been great, is that they haven't exactly been like earth shakers. You know, like uh, like last year when you know Breath of the Wild came out and it, it exploded, when you know Super Mario Odyssey came out and it exploded as well, or even uh, Horizon Zero Dawn when it came out. Uh, I mean, it caused you know, serious noise in the industry, but that hasn't happened yet. It might happen once you know God of War uh, comes out. I believe that's going to be the first must have absolutely must have must own system seller uh this year uh for sony but uh spider-man spider-man is um i mean i can't really fault sony uh sony they have the rights uh you know to spider-man uh when it comes to the movies uh and they did you know talk to marvel and disney and got the exclusive rights you know to the game as well for the console uh so what you know why not take advantage if uh you have part ownership of, of that IP. So, um, you know, the game, I'm just glad that they're putting the money into it. They got a great developer, like you said, in, in Insomniac, and they have, I mean, everything I've seen from the game, uh, it looks like, you know, graphic-wise, you know, it looks amazing. Gameplay-wise, um, if you know, the world, uh, the, the battles, you know, the, the battle system is very fluid um, and very responsive, and the world feels alive. And I'm also glad that you don't really see uh, Spider-Man swinging on the streets, you know, like shooting the web up to the clouds and swinging from the clouds. Uh, and he's actually going through the building. So it's not just a smooth, straight uh, swing. It's, you know, balancing side by side here to the building. So it, it adds, um, I guess, a little more challenge when it comes to uh, swinging to the streets. But um, so far, so good. Uh, game looks great. And like I said, I, I just posted it on the, on the chat. 
this is the type of game that I probably would get like a PS4 Pro uh, to play the game alongside on my 4K TV because uh, the game looks amazing. Uh, and I'm I'm really looking forward to it. So you did bring a good point. You're right. I don't think Sony has had the air shattering game as Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey uh, as. But the first games that I mentioned are more like the, what rounds up the year. What I mean with that is like Xenoblade Chronicles, not air, air shattering. Uh, but he rounded out the year nicely. You know, Mario Kart rounded the, the year nicely. Splatoon rounded the year nicely next to your Mario Odyssey and your and your Breath of the Wild. But that's what I'm saying. I don't want to put the carriage ahead of the horse. This all depends Sony having a great year if God of War and Spider-Man both deliver on the promise that it looks like it can deliver based on the previews of the game. Then you have, again, Detroit Become Human. I don't think it's going to be earth-shattering, but can round up the year really nice if it gets good scores. Uh, so uh, the same with Dreams. I don't know. I, don't, I really don't care about Dreams. I don't, I'm don't. i not a Lego yeah, guy. I don't, I'm not going to create. So. But I'll say this. Um, for me, uh, that, you know, Detroit Become Human, it, it's a different type of game. It's not, it, it's not a, an earth-shattering type game, but it's a game that is going to create a lot of controversy. A lot of, you know, it's going to get a, a lot of people talking, and it's going to get a lot of exposure out there. So I believe, you know, from that context, it's a it's a very different game from the one that Sony has had so far this year. Uh, so I think it it, it won't be uh, like you know like a 10, 15 million seller, but it will you know carry the conversation for Sony until the next uh, great release they have. I, I agree. I agree with that. LG Joshi, what is the, my favorite song? Are you saying for Megadeth? Uh, uh, let me see. Favorite song for Megadeth? Atula Mole is awesome. I can't, I'm sorry if I butchered the pronunciation on that one, but it's a great song. Uh, uh, anything from Countdown to Extinction, I really like. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm, God, I'm forgetting the one song that I really love. Uh, but anyway, if I remember, I'll let you guys know. But yeah, I do like Megadeth a lot. And the last album is pretty good. But anyway, sorry about that, that intervene there. But yeah, you're right. We'll see what happens. End of the year is going to be Josh. I think Sony has been consistent since 2005 with their exclusives. They always have good years with good, good exclusives throughout the year. Uh, my, one, the only thing I'm surprised is Spider-Man so close to that famous fourth quarter. You know, Calion is the one that that it's 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 leave you leave it for the third party developers. So, but maybe that's how much confidence Sony has in Spider-Man. But they still were smart. They didn't put it in the October November time frame. They like no no. Let me put it a little bit sooner, early September before the big hitters are. So Sony keeps track on their, uh, you know, on that strategy, not competing with their third-party developers. But I think, you know, we would agree, even if Kalionis is a big Nintendo fan, he even agrees that play, uh, Spider-Man PlayStation 4 looks pretty good and hopefully will deliver. Uh, he may get a PlayStation for it. Maybe unite the PlayStation family. I don't know. We'll see if we get him back because he's, he's betrayed the peeps by selling off his PlayStation. Uh, uh, I mean, nah. I mean, I haven't betrayed anybody. I, I just ran away from Final Fantasy XIV. Like I said, I played only a couple of months. I had uh, like three, four thousand hours in it, and it was it was enough. It, okay, well, well, it, I was stop the it was like living a double life. It was like living a double life. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Don't so when you buy the PlayStation again, just don't play Final Fantasy uh, fourteen again. Uh, Calionis, let's go to the next piece of new interesting rumors going around. But go ahead, Calionis. Yeah, and uh, I mean the this the interesting uh, rumors it basically comes from okay, so you have all these great games coming out for PS4 this year. You have games like you know um, that they have been you know pushed back until next year. Um, so there's I mean there's still a couple of releases. So for example, so you did mention the Try Become Human. Uh, yeah, it's coming out next month. You know, in May with God of War coming out this month. Uh, then you have you know the um, you know Dragon Quest XI uh, coming out in September. Uh, you have, of course, the, the the big third party games like you know, the Call of Duty Black Ops, uh, Ace Combat is going to be coming out as well. And then, um, I mean, for example, games um, that they haven't really specified exactly when uh, they're going to be coming out, but um, yeah, you know, they've been pushed back to the next year. Like, you know, Dreams is a 2018 title, but it doesn't really have a, a release date yet. Days gone. Uh, yeah, Days Gone is another yeah, one that... A lot of rumors, Last of Us next year, so Last of Us 2, sorry. So um... Yeah, but Last of Us, I think they can probably use it the same way they did on, on the PS3 and PS4. Uh, just have the, the PS4 version out uh, with the PS5 HD uh, you know, or 4K version uh, out as well. But, um, but yeah, it seems like there's still a healthy amount of games uh, for the PS4, but there's rumors about development kits for the PlayStation 5 
already going out earlier this year and that there's some specs uh that they're you know they're, they're basically talking on having so for example they say that the playstation 5 um like i said developers have development kits already and that it uses uh, amd's navi as its base architecture uh, but not exactly. I mean, it's something based around it, not exactly. And uh, the CPU is a custom. A custom then uh, there's a large amount of dead kids uh, have, that have gone out. Uh, they suggest that even though like releasing in 2018 is not out of the question, they don't expect it to release in 2018, uh, and that they have some VR goodies uh, in in the system as well. So okay, so that tells you that. Development kits, just to be, uh, I mean, just so people know, okay, yes, development kits are what the uh, the company expects the system uh, will be, like the power, the uh, the, the uh, architecture and everything else uh, in it. But it, it's not necessarily that there's they have PlayStation 5s. It's just a computer simulating what the PlayStation 5 specs will be. So they can just create a, I mean, a computer. They can throw uh, parts in it, and they can go ahead and, and send it over to the developers, so they can start making games, or, or at least uh, seeing what it is capable of, so they can see how much more they can put in, into the games for it. Uh, this doesn't mean that the PlayStation Five is going to come out this year. It doesn't mean that it's going to come out next year. Uh, it just means that they can get, you know, developers can gauge uh, how and you know how to make the games and how powerful and and all of that. So. Uh, what that this tells me is that now uh, Sony has already decided on what specs they will have on the system, and they could you know they could work very well wait until next year to release it or wait until 2020 uh, to release the system when those specs are even cheaper. Um, for me, I believe that the PlayStation 4 won't necessarily come out until uh, 2019, maybe. I mean, PlayStation 5 uh, yeah, won't come out until 2019. Uh, that That's when I believe it will because, I mean, you already have the, the, the Xbox One X and it's kind of like gaining all these, you know, like, you know, you know 4K assets and, and graphically uh, it is uh, looks better than the PS4 Pro. So I don't think Sony's going to wait too long, um, but I don't think it's going to be like 2020 or, or later. Or, and it's not it's not going to be this year. Uh, the system's not going to come out this year. So I, I believe 2019 is when we will finally see uh, the PlayStation 5. But um, I mean, what do you think about the reports that about developers having those kits and the specs for the system? So, uh, so I don't know if I if I believe them or not. I mean, rumors are starting. This is the first rumor. I wouldn't be surprised if they sent some type of developer kit to the third parties to give them an idea how the PlayStation Five is uh, architecture is going to look like, just to get feedback too. Because you know, Sony, you know, you have to be in credit for many years. They first. After they, the mistake of the PlayStation 3, the PlayStation 4, uh, Mark certainly said it, they they got feedback from the developers. They send it out really early, and they kept modifying the architecture of the PlayStation 4 until they settled to where, what it is today. Uh, even last minute, putting the 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 8 gigs of RAM GDDR R5 on the system. So so that was interesting how Sony and, 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 and trying to play that game with Xbox, trying to get the better performing hardware just even the last minute changing to eight gigs of, of of gdr5 where xbox was just three uh gdr3 sorry uh so it, it, it's interesting so i think to me yeah it could be true this is just maybe the first pass of how the specs are gonna look like Calionis, but doesn't mean that this is the final end specs and to your point yes sony has a lot of games but that is being historically known about sony sony at the end of the PlayStation 2 life cycle, they had God of War 2, and they already had PlayStation 3 on the market. Sony tends to be slow start, and then at the end of the gener generation, they bombard you with exclusives. That is the normal on. A lot of people, oh my God, where are Sony's exclusives? That's always been the case with them. PlayStation 2 started really slow. PlayStation 3 started really slow. And then, of course, PlayStation 4 started slow. But it, now you see all these exclusives, and you're like, oh my God, how does Sony keep... Pumping up the games is because they're a slow starter. It's always been that way. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're still 
Last of Us 2 or Death Stranding still come out to PlayStation 4, but then PlayStation 5 is on the market. But because of the architecture now being so similar to your point earlier, I wouldn't be surprised if like Last of Us 2 would come out both PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 and Death Stranding the same. And if you want the better graphics, you just buy the you know PlayStation 5 version, which I would do. Like I would be more than happy to buy those games in PlayStation 5. But I believe my my I guess or best guess, Kalianis. I prefer that Sony sent, puts the system out 2020 because that way they can get better specs out there, make it a little bit cheaper, and, and then maybe get a really umph in the system, a, a good jump, not a, a marginal jump like the Xbox One X days, even though it is the strongest console in the market, we won't deny it, but the Pro and the X are just marginal jumps compared to their, their counterparts, right? So we'll see what happens. My prediction would be 2020, November or September, October 2020 was when we'll see the PlayStation 5, Calionis. Yeah, and uh, and the other portion of this is, um, yeah, it seems like it, there's going to be a significant jump uh, when it comes to uh, the, the PlayStation 4 to the PlayStation 5, but also that they're going to have VR, it seems like, incorporated into the system. So maybe they're going to make this the system, you know, like powerful enough that they don't, they're not going to need that additional adapter, uh, but everything will be in the box um yeah they they have the playstation vr maybe i mean what i'm hoping for and I'm, what i when what i believe i will take off vr uh, like everybody has dreamed is when you have the uh, the wireless headsets because right now you have so many wires you're 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 connected you can't even you're like turn your head without feeling all of those yeah, wires you know true. pulling at you uh, i like i like the playstation vr and one of the reasons why i don't play it as much it's just i dread just going and finding all those cables and connecting all those cables and put it in my head I got a bunch of VR games I haven't played, and VR is really cool. When I had it connected and I was only focused on the VR, awesome. But once I switched back to my norm and playing on the couch, it was like, uh, and then I, I have a game uh, that I want to play right now, and I was like, I don't want to put all those cables and connect them. So to your point, you're right. Maybe this system will be strong enough or it will have the processor in a different box, but inside the PlayStation itself, so it can be powered up by the architecture inside, but it has its own processor dedicated to VR. That would be a smart way to Sony to save energy, but also make the next VR system powerful. And yeah, if they can reduce the cables, Calionis, I think that's gonna be key. Maybe just have one cable, right, in this in this gen. But but yeah, we'll see. And VR could play a big part. Like maybe the PlayStation Five will come with VR. You imagine that, Calionis? I don't know it will be may, may be expensive, but that's the easiest way to really populate or make sure the VR becomes mainstream. Is that you have it out of the box? How did the Wiimote? became so popular with motion control because it came out of the box. You didn't have to buy, buy all this crap separately, which was a mistake by Microsoft and, and Sony with the move and the can connect and all that stuff. Yeah, and, and the other, the, uh, another good example that I would use, for example, is the, uh, I mean, the, the, the Wii U gamepad. Uh, the Wii U gamepad, when you look at the screen, it was almost uh, refreshing at, at real time as you know, the same as the TV. So you would, if you look at the gamepad and you look at the TV, uh, it was almost instantaneous. You would not really notice any lag or anything at all. So, and that's wireless. I mean, the, the gamepad had no cables connected to it. It was, you know, uh, it was running wireless and it was, um, um, I mean, if, when you compare it to the PS4, to the Xbox One, and to the, you know, those consoles and what the PS5 will be, uh, significantly, um, well, I mean, like weaker, uh, console. I mean, if I if I'll say it that way. So and and that's the technology that came out in 2012, and and it was older than yeah you know, 2012 by the time it came out. So if you know, the PlayStation 5 comes out in 2019, for example, and it has and it, it is as powerful as they're yeah you know, like prepping it to be, and it, it includes the you know, the wireless VR as well. I think it is um it, it'll be probably everybody's uh choice like much like the the, the PlayStation is the, the the preferred Blu-ray. Uh, player to any other Blu-ray, and it was the cheapest one uh, when it came out as well. Uh, but it probably will be the preferred console or system for people to play VR games on. And if it's wireless, I think it it will turn out to be amazing, and uh, it will be the definitive uh, system uh, to play it on. Yep. But we'll see. We, we shall see. Kind of nice. Rumors, rumors, rumors. I'm still hoping that it comes out 2020. I don't want it right now. PlayStation 4 is kicking it really well. Let it breathe, Sony. Let it breathe. And uh, get your time. Maybe this time, take your time. Make sure that you have some good exclusives when you come out. I don't want to see Knack coming in your, your launch title for the PlayStation 5. Knack 3 kicking it 
in high gear. <laughs> anyway, Caliones, let's go to the next piece of news. Okay, and the uh, the, per- the next piece of news actually caused uh, a little bit of controversy when it came to you know like two gamers uh, and the gaming circle. Um, you know, before uh, the announcement. And of course, we're talking about you know the new Spiral trilogy uh, that was announced in in the same bay as you know Crash Vertical Insane trilogy. Uh, the first three Spiral games uh, have been getting, I mean, have gotten the the HD treatment and will be releasing this year. But uh, the rumors at first were that it was going to come out on the on the PlayStation first. Is it was going to have a one year exclusivity, and then it was going to come out uh, for the Xbox One and the, and the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I mean, I said to that, I mean, don't believe it because. If it's going to be a one-year exclusive for Sony, they're not going to announce uh, the Xbox One and Switch versions right away. They're going to wait to make those announcements. And I knew if they were to announce them uh, at the same time, it was because the games were going to be coming out either at the same time or a small window uh, afterwards. So the big news on this one is that, yes, Spyro Reignited uh, Trilogy has been announced for the PS4 and the Xbox One and not the Nintendo Switch. Um, why I say this? Because, you know, going back again, Crash Bandicoot, yes, uh, it was a PS4 time exclusive, but uh, it will be on the Switch as uh, alongside the Xbox One version as well. Um, but Spyro looks perfect for the Switch. So, Dantes, does this tell you that uh, they're overlooking the Switch version, that it's not going to come out on the Switch at all, that is, they're going to be waiting. Like, what, what do you believe is the reasoning why the Switch version hasn't been announced yet? Okay, so I mean, let me talk to two steps. So let me talk about first of all the exclusivity, the rumors, and stuff like that. Uh, I think Activision said, and they, they were smart, so they said, okay, we don't, Activision did not have any fate on their all IPs. Let me put it that way. So Crash kind of was the test bet, but they didn't want to take the plunge alone. So they said, Sony, Crash is really known by PlayStation gamers. Those are the main gamers who grew up with Crash, right? You want Crash? Let's get this, get this done. Let's do this deal. You know what I'm saying? They did the deal, developed Crash, and then boom. Calionis, he became a huge success. I'm like, oh, my God, what the hell? This shit is keep selling and selling and selling. I think it was almost like PlayStation top-selling game for a lot of months. Um and that shows you how the power of Crash and nostalgia meant something for PlayStation gamers. So after the exclusivity deal came out, Activision said, of course, now let's bring it to Xbox, let's bring it to Switch. It makes sense, make more sales. Now, now because Activision knows that nostalgia sells, they don't need to make the deal. Activision has money. They don't need to make the deal that they did with Sony to say, help me produce Crash, Spyro should come out Day one on all the systems because it makes sense. You get the more sales from all the systems at the same time. It makes sense. So this, to clarify, this is a multi-platform game. Boom. So I'm done with that. So it, because it is a multi-platform game, and you know me, Calionis, I hate port begging, but more more so I hate port begging when it's for exclusives. Stop port begging Bayonetta 2. It is on the Switch because Nintendo is paying the money. Stop port begging for Spider-Man. Spider-Man is on, on Sony because Sony was smart and made that deal with Marvel. That is it. There's no round about it. If you want to play those games, you buy the system that it belongs to. But because Spyro is a multi-platform game, Caliones, it does not make sense. And I'll defend my Nintendo brothers on this one. It does not make any, any sense that this game is not coming to the Switch now. Before I put, again, the carriage ahead of the horses, there's still rumors that it's still coming. It's just that Nintendo wants to announce it on their own terms, maybe on their own direct. Uh, There was even a listing that came out for the UK version of Spyro for the Switch. That may be the case. But at this time, I will say this. If Activision do not put the game at the same time as the Xbox and PlayStation 4 version, does, that does not b- make any business sense at all because that game has more of a chance of selling better on Nintendo consoles than on the Xbox console, pure and simple. I'm t- taking away the PlayStation because Pyro did came out on PlayStation 1 and, and the PlayStation fan base have some love for the Dragon. So I, I think it will sell fine there. But if you have a choice, Kalianas, between the Xbox and the Switch version, who is going to sell more? I'll bet you that the Switch version is the one that is going to sell more. 
The Xbox gamer don't care about games like that. Look at Super Lucky Tail, even though that game suck. But look at that game. It no one care about it, right? The the Xbox fan base likes shooters or mult or games by services and all that crap. That's what they like. PUBG, all that stuff. Platform gamer, platform type of games, they don't like those games. So why? Why would Activision do something like that? But again, this rant, I'll swallow it back up if if I'm wrong, Activision and Nintendo are just waiting for their time to announce the game, Carlos. Yeah, and uh, if we saw the same thing with uh, Crash and uh, Nintendo because uh, they actually waited to announce you know, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy uh, for the Nintendo Switch on the Nintendo Direct. So perhaps, yes, you know, maybe Nintendo is uh, or Activision is waiting to make the, uh, the proper announcement on a Nintendo Direct. Maybe you know, there's another one uh, coming out uh, this month or, or next month. Maybe they're going to wait until the E3 one. So Nintendo can include it on that one as well. Yep. Um, well, uh, and, and I believe another, another another theory could be, okay, so uh, Crash came out last year uh, for, uh, I think it was uh, in September. Um, I believe uh, no, June. It was June. June. It, it came out in June for uh, for the PS4. I believe the same developers are probably the ones working on the Spyro version mm-hmm. uh, and you know the sure. Spyro HD version. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you look at the development time, it's probably not too much time, even though they're just recreating the game. So uh, the the storyline, the the gameplay, and things like that, it's it's already set. Uh, they're only working on HD assets and and controls uh, for the most part. But the PlayStation and the Xbox, they're pretty similar uh, when it comes to the, uh, the same architecture. So if you develop for one, you're pretty much developing for, uh, for the other one as well. There's not too many changes when it comes to those. Uh, when it comes to the Nintendo Switch version, there is some compromises and things that you have to do uh, when compared to those others. So it could also be that, um, yes, they can release all three versions at the same time, but they will have to wait and delay the game longer, you know, to be able to meet all three of them. And what they're doing is releasing the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One version first, and then once they have the Nintendo Switch version ready, uh, releasing that one. I mean, that that could be a, another way to look at it. And this is the the, the glass half full, half empty type. Uh, so I, I'm not like I'm not ready to bash uh, Activision or or say anything negative about them because they're supporting. I mean, they're bringing support to the Nintendo Switch and they're supporting the Nintendo systems. Um, But I believe uh, the game is perfect for the Switch. Uh, It's going to be coming out at some point. Hopefully, like you said, it's going to be on the same day uh, as the other consoles. And if not, it's going to be shortly after. Uh, But uh, I believe Crash is going to do great. Spyro is going to do great. Um, And Spyro will be on the Nintendo Switch. So the only thing I don't like is what you said, yeah, they may be optimizing for the Switch and it will come out later. But at this point, Calderon's games need to come out the same date on the Switch as the other consoles. So, so if you're saying you want to do a Switch version, try to make that game come out first day. Because, like it or not, and some people will support Nintendo, they're Nintendo gamers, or they prefer portable, they will wait for their Nintendo version. But you got a lot of people like me, multi-platform gamers, Calderon. We're not going to wait for the Nintendo version. You see what I'm saying? So... It does hurt Nintendo waiting for them getting basically the sloppy seconds after it has been released on, on the other consoles. That's why I'm still going to hold my judgment until Activision announces it, but I do want the game to be released same date as the, as the, as the other consoles because if I had an opinion, I think Spyro it, it has more deserving to be on the Switch than the Xbox. So anyway. Unless you want to add something. Uh, I got the knife out, Caliones. So I'm ready. Is your buddy ready? Uh, Dantes, I'm going to go ahead and step back on this one. And you have the complete floor uh, to yourself. So here we go, guys. Look at that. Poop, poop, poop. Nino Kuni 2. So uh, bought this game. I still haven't opened it. And I bought it first day. Wanted to support Nino Kuni. First game was really good on the original system. This is too far away. Let me put it over here. First game was really good on the original system, uh, and 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 so I'm uh, I'm looking forward to to this one, uh, uh, and I think it's selling really well in the America. So I I heard good things. So we'll see if it keeps going. Again, the the, the fan base for Nino Kuni it is on the 
on the uh, on the West. So it is it is what it is. An RPG now, a type of RPG that sells better on the West than on the East. Anyway, just open it. Uh, here's the game, basically. You guys can see it right here. Okay. Here's the... Uh, what's this? this is... Oh, the music collection CD, Calionis. Look at that. So I'll try. If I buy collector's edition, it should be small ones going forward. I don't want to buy any more uh, big, big, uh, big collector's editions and stuff like that. Let's see what else we have here. We got more. We got more, Calionis. Look at that. Nice uh, figurines here. I don't know what they say. I think this is to make a, like a three-dimensional, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, of Don, Ding Dong City. It's one of the big cities in, in Nino Kuni that is returning from the original. Even though it's its own story, it doesn't have anything to do with the original. It's coming over. Uh, let's open the game and see what the game has. It's probably just going to be the the, the, the the game itself. It's not like games comes with manuals anymore. Damn, I miss those days. You remember that, Calionis? When you would open a new game and you see that manual, a new smell of the manual, you was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, and it'll be like uh, the you know, for the Nintendo Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64, you, you will keep the other uh, boxes and, and try to keep it neat without bending uh, with the game inside and, and the manual and, and everything. Uh, I think the the hardest one was the... Um, the uh, the earthbound one, <laughs> which was huge, uh, but but yeah, it was it was worth it. So I'm not gonna show it because I got the code here, but here he came up with the code for a couple of swords. This game is has more of a uh, MMO type of game where you pick a lot of weapons, different weapons. You keep upgrading and, and changing weapons out. Play anime here, and then of course the game right there. That's it, Calionis. That is the full unboxing right here. Look at that. Look at that. Nino Cooney. Well, what, what you didn't say is how much you spent on him. Uh, 80 bucks. Yeah, not bad. Okay. So $100 with the gamer's discount on Best Buy. Uh, no, it's 80, 60 with the gamer discount. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's uh, pretty. That's good enough. Yeah, it's, it, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Let me open this here. I I got having problems with the uh, with the plastic. <laughs> I'm bending the box. Sorry, never bend the box. Here we go, Pulling the box right here. Anyway, Calionis, while I pick all this crap out of here, go to the next piece of news. Okay, and for the next piece of news, uh, we're actually uh, going back over to the the Spider-Man game, and the you know the Spider-Man director, he's confirming that. Spider-Man will not include microtransactions uh, within the game. Uh, so, of course, you know, like it, it seems like you know, like just talking about microtransactions is a it's a big selling point on the game. There's a lot of developers getting you know going out of their way just to make sure that people know that the games not you know will not be included and on there. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's something that we're not. I mean, we don't really like. Uh, we wish your games would not feature it, and it really takes away, uh, the, especially how certain companies use it, which you could consider it as gambling. Uh, but um, I'm glad that you know this uh, Spider-Man will not include it on there. Uh, even though something I would like to see is that I did hear that you will be able to have different outfits uh, for Spider-Man and that you may be able to create your own outfit as well. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, outfits uh, will be something that you will have to pay for um, you know, later on. But um, Nantes, um, what, what, is, what are your thoughts about no microtransactions on Spider-Man? We got another story. We're going to touch base on another company backtracking our microtransactions, but this is good. I'm happy there's no microtransactions. Sony has, has stayed the course. We'll see what the new guard takes more over if that's going to change. But they haven't done microtransactions. But they have to do the rigmarole with the DLC and all that stuff. So they're going to give you three more missions after it launches, uh, the game launches. So I, I guess, again, me, I don't know if I can wait for all the missions to come out. I want to play the game as soon as possible. Maybe one of those games that I need to come back. Like, I, I still haven't come back to Horizon, you know. Uh, after the DLC, so uh, that's tough for me uh, to go back. Uh, or Xenoblade Chronicles too. Well, but that one I'm really waiting for everything to come out to play it again. Uh, but uh, you know about the uh, the building your own Spider-Man suit. Someone, a lot of people are gonna make some funny suits, so that's gonna be cool to have. Hopefully they they put it that you can download other people's creation. That would be cool if they can do something like that. We'll see. But you know, it's understandable. 
Sony also wants some money, so they have some DLC and expand, kind of like an expansion pack type. And of course, they're gonna have some DLC items, but no microtransactions. We make sense for uh, you know, this is this is not a, a a multiplayer game. So anyway, yeah, and yeah, I mean, as far as Spider Man, like as long as they have the full game, um, you know, when they you know release it, and they don't keep you know some of the uh, the content away from it just because they want to sell the DLC, I'm perfectly fine with it. So whoever buys the game, they can get the full experience out of it, and whoever wants to get the DLC, then they'll get added uh, you know a bonus to it. Uh, but I'm I'm okay with it. Uh, moving on to the next one, and I believe um, I'm gonna just go ahead and, and skip uh, this one, and I'll go back to it. But since we were talking about microtransactions, uh, the game that is actually going to remove my trans- microtransactions later this year, it's uh, Middle Earth: Shadow of War. Uh, so Shadow of War, when it first came out, uh, it caused a lot of controversy because um, I mean, it had it, it was full of microtransactions, and even one of them. Uh, was for a character that the you know the game created based on one of the developers that passed away, uh, and they were you know the company said they were honoring uh, their families by uh, you know selling that character, uh, people buying it, and then donating the game uh, to the families. But uh, the problem with that was that one they were not donating the full amount, two not all the states in the U.S. would actually permit it. So from certain states that they would get money from the character, they would not be able to you know, donate the money uh, and they would keep it completely. And three, the game is not only sold in the U.S., it's sold uh, in the you know, worldwide. So any donations from around the world by purchasing the characters, the company would be pocketing it and not donating it to the family. So, um, I mean, it, 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 it had all kinds of wrong uh, going on. Um, and it's, I think, is uh, what I say, uh, I, you know, too little, too late. Uh, it's something that they should address within the first weeks or before release of the game. But uh, it's been over six months, and now it's when they're finally saying that they will be removing it. So um, maybe they're removing it because they already made the money that they wanted to make. Maybe they're removing it because they're not making any money out of it. And just so they can get some positive PR, they're you know, putting it out there that they're taking it away. Uh, who knows? But uh, it should have been done a long time ago. Agreed, 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 agreed. Everything that you said, it's probably the latter. It's going to be more that they, you know, if the game's not making that much money they're about to release the dlc so they want to have more people uh buy the game so then you have potential uh buyers of the dlc right um so i i was a fan of the first uh shadow of war shadow of mortar the original one i platted the game on the playstation 4 uh, that's a game that i'm more than willing to wait until everything has come out and then i will probably play the game originally i wasn't even gonna buy the game because I, i'm against microtransactions or excuse me, loot boxes more so in single player games. That doesn't make sense at all. But now that they remove it and they're going to even update the last chapter where it becomes a grind fest. So it forces you to buy orcs. They're also going to optimize that. I may give the game a shot, but I'll give the game a shot again when everything has come out. And it's it's a bargain bin because, again, I, I don't think this game, what they try to pull does not deserve to give them uh, any pennies. So I will wait until the game is cheap with everything to play the game, and I will play it because, again, like I said, I like the first uh, Shadow of Mordor game. So I would be—I'm looking forward to this game, but not right now. Let them suffer a little bit more, Kalionis. <laughs> and from going to you know, from a game that has been suffering to a game that actually has become the fastest-selling game in the franchise history, and we're talking about Far Cry Five. Not only the best-selling game in the franchise, but also the second biggest launch ever uh, for Ubisoft. Uh, I mean, you could say that is because you know all the other Far Cry games. They're um, you know very fun, uh, real quality, arcadey type uh, games, uh, and you know, and you know like with stories over the top and the, the action as well. Or you could say that it was because it was marketed a certain way, um, you know, in regards to you know the the U.S. you know current you know current politics and, and things like that and what's going on uh so i mean you can say either way but it doesn't really take away the game um you know even though um it's been um not so par but it's actually been uh, you know split when it comes to the critics uh some people hailing it as uh i mean one of the greatest games in the franchise others saying that it's okay but 
it's been a money maker for Ubisoft. And I'm actually glad for Ubisoft. Um, another thing that I'm glad for Ubisoft um, that we haven't really mentioned here is that they're actually buying all their stock back from Vivendi and they're separating from Vivendi and Vivendi will not be able to do the hostile takeover that, that they have been trying for years. Uh, so Ubisoft will continue to be owned by the same family and will not succumb to Vivendi. But uh, as far as Far Cry 5, uh, what do you think, Dantes? So good numbers for them. I know that there's been some controversy with the type of game, the setting and stuff like that. Some of the media, you know, wants to make it, you know, their own little uh, political uh, battle cry, if you want to call it that way. Video games should not be, they could be pol politics on video games, but but if it's not designed to be that way, don't force it to be political. I believe that the world that we live in now, everything is too political right now. So it's good to have just fun. And I think Far Cry 5 just represents fun. So please don't take it too seriously. Just play the damn game and don't polit politicize the game. It's just a damn video game. So that's my first message. Uh, so good for Ubisoft. You know, I haven't played a Far Cry. I, I was kind of interested in Far Cry Primal. I may play that one this year. I don't know. Uh, uh, my, my my list is becoming smaller and smaller as I play less and less video games this year. <laughs> Kali, honest, it's been one of the worst years for me <laughs> in beating games. So we'll see. But, hey, congrats for Ubisoft and Far Cry 5. The sales are good, which means that they're going to keep pumping. Hopefully they don't get too good because then we're going to start seeing Far Cry every damn year. <laughs> but anyway, we'll, we shall see, Kali, honest. And going over to the next one, and this is one that uh, I mean, you were talking about the other day, um, and you're excited to you know to play it. Uh, we're talking about uh, Guacamelee Two. Um, it's going to be coming uh, not only for you know the PlayStation yeah. Four, but it's also going to be available on PC uh, via Steam. Uh, this was announced uh, well, actually um, a little less uh, than a week ago, so uh, people will be able to enjoy it on PC and PS4. Um, are you going to be getting this one, Dante? Oh, yeah, of course, Carly, honest. I will. I will get it on PlayStation because of the plot, but challenging game, really fun Metrovania type of game, uh, merges uh, Lucia Libre combos with uh, Metro uh, Metrovania type of game. So it's really a fun game. I really, If you haven't played Carly, honest, the first Wakamele, I do recommend it. It's, it is on, on the Wii U. Uh, uh, so, I'll, you know, if you have a chance, just play it. And it, again, wanted to put it out there more so you know, to the PC gamers out there, typically, uh, you know, hey, buy it, give it support, don't let it drown on Steam with all the crap. <laughs> so, uh, oh, buy the game, and of course, uh, I will be buying the first day on PlayStation. And uh, going over to the last piece of news, and this is another one of those earth-shattering type news, uh, and it is that uh, no Man's Sky not only will be receiving a free update, but it will also be coming out on the Xbox One. Uh, so yeah, it's one of the, uh, I'll say the uh, the most talked about PlayStation 4 exclusives. Yeah, um, not in a good but, way. <laughs> but not in a good way. But it's still one of the most talked about. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's um, I, I'll, I'll say it this way. Um, I played No Man's Sky when it first came out on the PS4. I mean, not on my PS4. I played it on my uh, on my brother's PS4, uh, and I put um, I'll say a good uh, 15 to 20 hours on the game, uh, but then I didn't play it again because Boring. there wasn't anything. Yeah, it wasn't anything else to do. Um, one of the biggest selling points from the game was uh, I mean, such an enormous uh, universe that it was going to be rare for players to encounter each other, but they made it seem like, yes, players would be able to encounter each other. So uh, I already had a plan uh, that, you know, if, if the game you know came out to be great, I was going to get a PlayStation. My brother would have one. We would get on the game, and we would try to coordinate and see how we could find each other, you know, within the game and then play it that way. Uh, but as it turned out, uh, you could be standing on the same play as another player and not see each other at all. Uh, so, I mean, it's, that was um, one among many other things that uh, they oversold and under-delivered uh, with the game. But um, I will say that, yes, uh, they caught a lot of flag. Yes, uh, it hurt them. I mean, they had initial you know, great sales, and then the game took a nosedive, uh, and it was found at the discount bin within a couple of weeks. 
Uh, but they have continued to update the game. They have added features to it. Um, it's not worth yeah, $60, which was the, uh, the price tag when it first came out. But um, it is a pretty, com I mean, close to complete game. Uh, it doesn't really feel empty. I just hope that uh, once it comes on the Xbox One, uh, it's not gonna feel. Uh, it's not gonna be a you know full price game. It, there is gonna be yeah, you know it's close forty dollars. Like I think forty dollars. Forty dollars. Still, that's expensive so, in my opinion. But yeah. okay, keep going. Uh, the only downside to this is that I didn't want to feel that way again uh, with another game, and I kind of felt the same way with Sea of Thieves. Um, so Sea, sea of Thieves <laughs> sleeping, but yeah, they keep going. So. So yeah, it's um. I mean, for those that you know like uh, space games, um, you know you may want to you know get on this one. Um, for those that like the exploration, you know, traveling, you know, charting different places, yeah, doing some sort of building, um, you may like the game. But there's no multiplayer. There's no uh, meeting any other players. So uh, you be will be playing alone by yourself for eternity. It seems like, but. Um, how, what would you say? Is this a uh, great news? Big, you know, big news coming out. What you know? What you know? What it is bigger than this one? Hellblade coming out on Xbox One. Yes, I agree hundred percent with that one. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a game. That's a good that, game. That's a good yeah. game. So, and you beat it how many times? Twice, two plats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I beat it the UK version and the US version. That was a, like a, an easy two plats but I was more than happy to do it because it is a good game so uh, let me say this about No Man's Sky so when Sony was promoting promoting this game up the ass I always got him always and I'm I'm the first one I am not the type, those type of fanboys who are gonna just play whatever this the, 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 the company just puts out because it came out on their favorite console see uh Sea of Seas uh, as an example how some fanboys are defending that piece of crap but my, my point to that is that I was never, never a fan of No Man's Skies. I always kept saying and Sony did the concert in 1E3 or whatever, PlayStation Experience, and then they always showed the game last. And I'm like, why is Sony spending so much time in this piece of crap? Because the game never interests me from the start. Now, the difference, my brother Roger, he got into the hype. He bought it first day, and then two days later, he was like, man, this game is so boring. Yep. Yep. Roger, yes, I told you that that game looked like crap. And again, hey, every different people have different tastes. Some people like the game, and good for you. Uh, but I bet you that a lot of people who like the game was because oh my, by Sony PlayStation favorite company is giving me the exclusive, so I need to be first. It was never an exclusive to clarify because it also came out on PC first day. But I guess again, people just can't understand that if it's on a PC, it is a multi-platform game. Anyway, um, so aside from that, uh, after that ran. I'm never interested in that game. Good that it's on the Xbox. You're, at least you guys are getting once in a while. You guys get the 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 the, the better version of a game because now you're gonna get the full game. You don't have to wait yeah. and, and spend time. Yeah, I'm, I just wanna say quick. Uh, you know, you're holding a knife in your hand, right? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. yeah just yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, let me see. Let me put it down in case that we get flagged down because I'm threatening to kill Kalionis or something like that. Uh, uh, no. But my point to that is that. It is, it is, it is a to me good for Xbox. Finally getting the game. I don't think no one cares now. Uh, I think it's a little too little too late. Uh, I I I feel Sony did struggle at first early in the generation really with picking the exclusives that they were gonna sell because they you know they pick this No Man's Sky and they were like pumping it up like their own exclusive. Honestly, they spent more money on this game promoting it that they that they spent on games like Until Dawn. That game got no promotion. And came out of left field and saw Gambusters sink to YouTubers who were like streaming the game and showing the game and showing how fun the game is. And the amount of choices that you can do in All Till Dawn is one of the good PlayStation 4 exclusives that a lot of people sometimes miss. But it's so well with no promotion. But then Sony comes and, and promotes this piece of crap. You see what I'm saying? You see how it's kind of like, like sometimes you do put your, your chips on the run. Uh, you know, on the wrong table, and Sony put their chips on, uh, or their own egg, their eggs on the wrong basket on this one for sure with No Man's Sky. And the same with uh, uh, what was that game? Crap. Uh, oh, the Order eighteen eighty six, right there. I got the special edition. Wasted money on the Order eighteen eighty six special edition because the game looked awesome, and the game graphically 
is one of the best looking games er- anywhere. But it, it it was it was a little thing in gameplay. Let me put it that way. So Sony had a rough a rough start. They're, I think they got their stride back for sure. But uh, yeah, I, I, it, it offends me that they spend money promoting No Man's Sky and not games like Until Dawn, who deserved it even better, and they had a good game in their hands there. But yeah, um, you could also make it the argument that uh, they probably would have been better off uh, instead of shutting out all this money and all this support to you know the Hello Games and No Man's Sky. Uh, maybe a game, a game like Rhyme, because Rhyme was supposed to be a, a PS4, a PlayStation exclusive uh, at the beginning. Uh, there was some development issues, and it ended up being, you know, like uh, still coming on the on the PlayStation, but uh, became multi-platform. But uh, that's one of the games that we talked about last year. Yeah. Um, and it was, You're yeah. Right. I mean, it's not, it's not a big game. It's not a a title that you're gonna spend, you know, like dozens of hours or hundreds of hours. But it was a, a really nice. A uh, small game, a uh, really, really great payoff at the ending as well. Uh, so I mean, it's it it is. I mean, it would not have made that big of a difference being a PS4 exclusive. But I believe those type of games would have been better off uh, for Sony uh, than a No Man's Sky, where uh, they got nowhere, especially uh, when the game first came out and all the, uh, I mean, all the heat that Hello Games caught. Um, they, yeah, you know, they. The creator of the game, he had to hide. There was, I think, he spent probably like the first, you know, two three months. Nobody heard of him, uh, so they nobody really knew if he was alive or not. Uh, but it's, um, I mean, it's it took them a while before they uh, came out and they said, hey, we're gonna have an update. Uh, there's certain things that they, you know, didn't touch, like the multiplayer portion. But uh, like I said, if, if the game's like, you know, you uh, you did state that it's gonna be forty dollars, it's not, not gonna be sixty. Uh, for some people. Forty dollars is going to be, you know, forty you know, dollars well spent on a game like this. Uh, if you like this type of game, uh, or if you have a discount, you know, you can get it for cheaper as well. But uh, just don't go in like, you know, like uh, Sony fans at the beginning when they jumped into it, or like people like myself that was like, hey, I don't have a Sony system, but I really want to, you know, play that game because of all the promises uh, that they, you know, did at the very beginning and that they never came to fruition. Hype is a deadly, deadly virus, Calione. And if you hype a game so much that doesn't deserve it, even me with Spider-Man and, and God of War, I'm keep saying it looks awesome. But let me reserve judgment until I play those games. So yeah. you have to watch out with hype. Sometimes it eats you up, and then and then it just you you get disappointed. And that happened to me with I, I, everybody happens, but it happens to me with the Order 1886. Uh, and I know a lot of people happen to with you know. Uh, with uh, No Man's Sky. But anyway. Well, yeah. uh, hype is horrible. It is a bad thing unless it is about Smash. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> We shall see. Uh, I'm not going to get hype unless I see a Rex and a, and a Shulk in there. But anyway, with that said, Caliones, <laughs> let's end it for tonight. We're down to almost an hour. Nice, nice show tonight. A lot of good news. Fun news tonight to talk about, Caliones. But anyway, with that said, let's go. Boom. There's the band. I want to thank everybody for watching Force in Unison Live, episode 25, right here at the Force in Unison Gaming channel. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make this to Crazy MS happy. Also, please remember, we do have a Nintendo podcast called the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast every Saturday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can get that podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes for free. Also, please remember that this show officially will be starting to be uh, on every Sunday. So Sunday, 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 Force in Unison Live is moving to the new uh, time slot. Not this Sunday, the following Sunday. We had a show this week, so of course, the following Sunday, this show will be moving to Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Repeating that so you guys can remember. Uh, also... Hey, we do have a Facebook page called At Forcing Unison Gaming. And finally, Hendante says, finally, go to chiguerosnews.com and get switchcore.net and give some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, thank you again and long live gaming. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>